are back. Act two, the podcast, episode one hundred and one, going strong. We want to thank you for the hundredth episode, but we are on one hundred and one right now. Yes. And it's your boy International Walk, and it's your girl Taj, the co-hostess with the mostest. And we are back this week with another episode of Act Two, the podcast. Uh, appreciate all the fans, all the listeners, all the watchers out there who support. watch the show, who support, who engage. Appreciate y'all. A hundred is a big milestone. And um, we were happy to do uh, such a great show. Thank you for all the show. comments. Yeah, thanks for all the good comments. People um, that I didn't even know watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. no, I knew people watched. Like, I didn't know some people were um, subscribed on, mm-hmm. you know. It's on dope. all the platforms. Yeah, pretty dope. Yeah, so um, me appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, and we just hope everything is going well with y'all. Everything is going well with us. And um, thanks again on the 100 episodes. Um 101. We're back. 101. Um, Siendo uno. You guys can catch us on all the platforms, such as act2thepodcast.com, the website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Radio Public, TikTok, Breaker, and Spotify. Um, get right to it. How are you? I'm okay. What's up um, with the BGs? I don't have the BGs. Okay. I have SB. Sour belly. Yeah, my tummy's not feeling good. But mentally, mm. mentally, I actually... I, okay, I'm feeling outside of the things that aren't good. You're overall, like I'm... Feel, in your future. No, overall, I feel good. Um, I probably would say I'm an eight, you well, know. you know, SBs don't end up with tight dookies. They always loose. So you're not going to have SB and end up with some solid... I'm not going to talk about the consistency of my bowel movements. I'm just saying, though. SB cons- implies soft shit. No, no, it could result in a belch. I might have a gas bubble. That's true. Like, that doesn't mean somebody's going to have diarrhea. Okay. Jeez. I would bet diarrhea, <laughs> but whatever. No, I made a fantastic dinner, I thought, but my stomach must didn't agree. I am, so overall, <laughs> mentally, I would say I'm an eat. You know, mm-hmm. outside of the things that I'm not an eat about, if I had to separate myself from other things, then I'm an eat. Work is a seven. I'm still an eight. But I don't mean. You. Why, 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 what are we talking about here? Why can't we just go through the mental and the finances? You're saying I'm if going. I separate myself, like that's what I'm saying. Like even though I'll get to that. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> we have four categories, and you're talking about separating yourself from from what? I'll get to okay. that. Oh, mentally, I'm an eight. Finances, I'm a nine. Okay. I'm gonna just say that you know, Christmas time, spend a little bit of money, but I don't have no worries. Work is a seven. Okay. That's why I said mentally, I'm an eight take away work and physicality i'm a seven so separate those two things well you're a seven plus because you can't be anything i'll I'll take a 7.5 but work i really want to be a seven i want to i want to put my foot down and say i'm a seven i hope that you would Um, (laughs) put your foot down in some sort of way Um, but um you would but yeah that that's what i meant like if i take away those things mentally i'm still an eight even though those things ain't the greatest right now i mean work is good it's just I just meant because you were saying take away those things, and then two sentences later we were going to talk about those same things that you That's took away. I would, but I would because I was just kind of prefacing that even though those things weren't a high scoring for this week, I'm still an eight. Now you're stressing me, and you're about to bring it down to like a seven point eight. I don't care. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm. I'm alright. Okay. Yeah, I would say I'm. Um, <laughs> Got a little coffee. Dying a little bit right now. Got a little coffee. Dying a little bit right now. Mentally, I would say I'm a seven plus. What's a seven plus? Like, is that the lowest seven point five? Seven plus is seven point five. Okay. Yeah, that's. I thought we established that, but maybe I wasn't clear. The seven plus is the seven point five people. I knew 7.5 was have. the lowest, but I didn't know if you were like maybe a 7.8. No, we never did those numbers. We just do 7.5. We do half sizes. So 7.5, then jump right to 8. <laughs> I'm not going to go with this point sixes and 7s and all that. Okay. So finances, I would say, is a 9. Not worried. Like she said, Christmas time, spend a little money. Um, work, I would say, is 8. There you go for that. Physicality, I would say an 8. Your shoulder been bothering you. Really, you're eight. Um. Well, I got I'm eight with a little bit of TS, a little tender shoulder. So, I would. TS. 
months, he made that diagnosis up. No, it's it's a diagnosis. You can Google tender shoulder. But how do you know you have di you have TS right because now? Because it's the symptoms. When you Google it at the Mayo Clinic, it gives you the symptoms, the diagnosis, and the treatment for it. That is one of the worst things that have happened to society. What, is I, you know what I learned that from? You know what I learned that from? I know. Okay. And it's bad because we self-diagnose. I didn't know <laughs> shit about no Googling Mayo Clinic and none of that shit before I met her. And you can select which body part yeah, is her. So don't give me that shit. Like, I Google what, what's bad. wrong with me. And we all are, are We all do it. You know, they, it will have you thinking like, oh, my God, I need an MRI for something. And you just might need to stretch. But Yeah, I got a little TS, a little tender shoulder. I didn't say nothing was torn or broken. It's just tender. It's time. You know what? Wish it was and work for this week. When I keep my ailments to myself and just suffer slowly, you know, people going to think it's you. I want to take care of you. I don't want you to No, suffer. people going to think it's you when they see me shriveling away and... They're gonna be like, damn, she ain't right. I damn. breathe life into you, don't she? Gonna be like, they're gonna be like, damn. Mm. I breathe life into Wilds you. Wilds and woes. Say sorry to the people. Wilds and woes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <coughs> sheesh. If, you know, life is just happening. Like, you get lost mm -hmm. in the days and the calendars and the weeks. Um, the wilds, I would say. Um, you know, I had a great time this weekend with some people that I love. Um, you know, just spending time and despite things that life is life and for all of us, like in a major way for a lot. I don't want to say for all of us. If it, if it's not, thank God. And hopefully it doesn't, nothing goes on um, negatively. But I've talked to some people today and realized like is it's, it's that widespread. Means? What? Life is life and does that mean negative? Life is life and yeah, it kind of has a negative connotation where it's like things that happen in life that you know happen in life. When they all just kind of happen at the, like, together. So if somebody like, was to, like, sheesh. you know, get a promotion or get a good job and they say, like, praise God, life is life. And that's, that don't apply because it's positive. Yeah. That, like, that's that, not, that's life not is a, still happening, though, right? But, I mean, that kind of slang where you say, sheesh, life is life. And, you know, like when life can be a little hard. It can be a little difficult, a little trying. So when you say life is life and it's like. She's just a, a lot going on. It doesn't really apply to the positive things, which is great. You know, you want to hear about those. And like, and that's it, sad to say though, because that that people will focus on the negativity. And I understand life happens to people, and some some things need your focus. I'm not discrediting that, but for people out there, you know, try to focus on what's positive in your life, and not count on what's what's missing or what's bad all the time well that goes without saying it doesn't mean that things aren't happening so that's really what well, life it is doesn't life go without it. saying i wanted to say it and um, it doesn't go without saying because some people could think that like i would like to turn that into a positive and think like okay if you run into some money or you get a good job you can still say life is life in and just mean it to be in a positive man. It doesn't mean I got to wait for something negative to happen to say life is life. It doesn't necessarily mean negative, but it well, just I means things are happening. Like, you know, whether you have family members being sick, whether you have a lot going on at your job, whether your car breaks down, whether you need a new stove, like things that it, it don't have to be a new job. It don't have to be a worst case scenario, but it's like, whoo, life is life and things is just happening. And sometimes it's it's more so sad when things are happening like back to back. So with that being said, was happy to be able to spend some time, um, some downtime, some fun time, some love and laughter time. And that, that was like a wild moment for, for this week and just, you know, enjoying myself. And to your point, appreciating the things that I have. And my the things, the people, you know, that I have in my life and not focusing on the negative, to your point. Um, woes. Um, I want not that it's me personally, but um hearing about the death of the it's a shame that he's given the title the, the DJ Twitch because I knew him on a platform prior to him working along with the Ellen show. Um I You knew him. I knew of him or right. I was introduced you knew to of him. him. Yeah, like a lot of people did, like from So You Think You Can Dance in 2011. He was, I think they're up to episode 17, and he was on, I'm sorry, season 17, and he was on season four. And, um, you know, it's just sad to see. You never know what people are going through. And it, again, it wasn't a direct woe to me, but it was one of those woe moments where you like, 
again not anything that it's the first time ever we've seen these stories before but it's just like a whoa moment when it's somebody you know it, it may have been the same response when it things unfortunate happen with other people but for me having kind of seen his career throughout over the last 10 years before he worked along with the ellen show it just was like whoa so that was a whoa moment mm. Wows and woes for you my wow is just um christmas is coming and i really enjoy christmas as i say it's getting closer um if i'm being honest it doesn't feel all christmassy in here like if i'm being real honest in a house you mean yeah it doesn't feel that christmassy here um, okay. but I know, you know, where it's, what's the 14th? I'm dating the show, but yeah. it's in the teens and, you know, we got some days to get there. So I know, you know, feelings have changed, spirits will change, um, energy will change, but, um, I like Christmas and I want it to be Christmassy. What can I do to make it more, do you want like some decoration in the house? I mean, that, we have our tree up. That's beautiful. That's very assuming that it's you. Um, well, but, I'm not saying that it's me. I'm saying what well, is it's us together. So how can I help you? Um, probably can't go through that now because I'm going with the, with the with the um whoa. But, okay, I didn't um, know we couldn't detour for a sec. Yeah, um, my whoa is just my grandmother's been on my mind and um been thinking about her a lot. Um, I know I might have spoke about this last episode, but she's just really, really been on my mind and on my heart, and I miss her. Um. And um, probably making plans to go see her soon, which is probably super, super hard. But I just miss my grandmother. I miss my Nana a whole, whole lot. Um, and I don't know how to stop missing her. So that's my will. Can I say something? You shouldn't try to stop? Like, you know? I'm not trying. It's just... Um, I'm, well, you say you don't know how to stop. Man. Yeah, but I meant that in a generic way. Not like I'm really forcing myself to try to stop okay. missing her. Just, it's difficult. Um... It's it's a different kind of pain, um, and again, this is the first person that died to me who was close to me, so it's a new pain for me, mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's super difficult. Grief is super difficult, and um, I miss her so much, so so much. Um, so that's my what is that sometimes I have bouts, ebbs and flows of just daydreaming about her. Um, she would be in my house right now, just hanging out, <laughs> um, you know, looking at my trees because she used to like Christmas trees. Um, so, yeah, I just think about her a lot, especially in this season, because all the Christmases of my childhood, she made right. Like she all she no matter what I woke up and didn't have when I went to her house, I, I did have. So, you know, shouts out to my nana. <laughs> um. Conversation going around the internet. Woo, that was. Hold on, let me get myself together. Mm. Um, I appreciate you for sharing, though. Conversations uh, around the internet, and this is just a generic topic. But who who uh, would be at fault the most between men and women cheating? I mean, between men and women when cheating happens. Let me rephrase the question: Who would be at fault the most between men and women when cheating happens? I think it's men that, you know, we hear about the most. What, 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 when you say at fault, do you mean just who cheats the most? No, I didn't ask who cheats the most. I just oh, said who's, who's at, fault. at fault? Yeah. I don't think that's any... that thing we talk about where. Well, that's why I clarify. We hear what they hear. That's like, why I clarify. I just, I'm going to rephrase I it. Think... Who's, who, who would be at fault the most between men and women when cheating happens? I'm always, okay, so I think men cheat more than women, and I don't think a woman is at, I don't think the other person is at fault for somebody cheating. So I think the accountability or the fault, if you want to call it, is on the person who's cheating. And that's not to say that the partner, there may not be some contributing factors, but to be at fault for doing something, it's your fault for doing it. So if, if I think men cheat more, so they're at fault more. <coughs> mm, <my> nose <coughs> I don't know who cheats more. I should have looked that up the percentage wise just to have it for a reference. Mm -hmm. So sitting here now, I don't know who cheats more. But um, cheating can't happen without the consent of a woman. So although it's wrong for a man, if he's married, say myself, just an example, to go out of my marriage to you know engage with another woman, yeah, that's wrong on my part. But cheating can't happen unless the woman says so. 
in no way, shape, or form, man cannot cheat unless the woman says yes and lays down, even if she's married. But man can't do anything outside of his marriage. He can flirt. He can want to have sex with a girl. He can want to be in a woman's face. But he can't do anything, anything to violate his marriage to that degree until she says yes and lays down and opens her legs. Because otherwise it's rape. So in that sense, I would say and push back and say that if we're talking about fault, I would think women kind of control that situation. Now, again... It's wrong for a man to go outside his marriage. You shouldn't be doing that, and you're at fault for that. But your act that you're trying to do can't happen unless she says yes. That's BS. Because uh, okay, <laughs> listen, so how do you have so sex? Listen, no, uh, hold on, let me just push back on that question. How do you have sex with somebody that you want to have sex with if they don't let you? Well, okay, you're at fault for even wanting to have sex with that person. Okay, I, I, I know. I'm I, acknowledging I, that. I'm, I'm asking saying, you, how do you have sex with somebody if you if they don't let you? No, of course there's consent. So when you say at fault, I'm thinking that you were referring to within the relationship who's at fault. Like, I mean, because when you're talking about cheating, that other woman, she don't care. She's not at fault. Well, that's kind of why I phrase it as a generic question and not nothing specific. So it's not, it's just like who would be at fault the most. And you can say a woman, um, I mean, a man cheats more. I don't know that to be true. And it Me could either. be possibly true, but I don't know that to be true. But how are you not going to acknowledge that nothing can happen without the consent of y'all? I understand that. But what I'm saying is, okay. Just this random scenario, if a man is in a relationship right. and he decides to step out of his relationship and pursue. He's wrong. He's automatically at fault. Now, right. yes, he has to have a consenting woman, but she's not at fault for him cheating. How I'm, is she how is she at If a man steps out of his relationship or says I'm not getting something here and goes out of his relationship and sees a woman that he's interested in and she's married and he's trying to hit on her and flirt with her. And not, what I, my point is, nothing can, no cheating can go on unless she allows it. Plain and simple, there's no way to slice the pie. You can what? stop so at, at fault. you can stop at, oh, because you went outside your marriage you, and you're thinking about it, you're the one at fault. But how do you not acknowledge that sex has to happen by her saying yes and laying down and opening legs? Okay, so that if that she, doesn't if, if, happen, if then, that's for the scenario, then. She, he, she's at fault for him cheating on her wife. He's at fault for her cheating on her husband. I mean, it takes two parties to consent. She so could be the one. So the question, so to answer the question, you're saying it's equal fault. I, I don't even because think, initially you said it was just the woman. Because I thought, I mean, it was the man. Because I thought you were talking about within the relationship, who is at fault for a person cheating? I mean, I don't even know if you can say if a if my. If somebody, okay, if I'm not Natasha and I'm a different woman and my man cheats on me and you want to tell me it's her fault because she agreed, I don't give a hell what she agreed to. Like, it shouldn't no, even be. No, all I'm saying is that is, is, the, is that is she more at fault because she's married, so she's stepping out of her relationship. She know he's married, so she's destroying that marriage. No. So she's all not you had destroying to... that marriage. <coughs> He's destroying that marriage. She's destroying her marriage. Okay. She's not destroying his marriage. Well, He's not so destroying her marriage. So there is no acknowledgement of her saying no. She couldn't have said no. Yeah, she could have said okay, no. But so then. could he have? He he. Well, what if she was pursuing him heavily? What if they was at work and she like, come on, so come that's on. That's the question. Who would be at more fault? Men, you're saying. I guess you're whoever's saying pursuing men, it. Regardless if she said yes or no, who just because that person said so they were the enabler, but it's your fault yeah, that the, you did it. So the enabler is not as bad as the pursuer, is what I you're don't know. Right, right. I think it's equal, is my point. That, okay. You know, I think the enabler is just as bad as the as the as the person who's pursuing. Yes, you're wrong for stepping outside your relationship or wanting to do so. Like you should have a conversation or get away from that person. But it, what my, my point was, n none of that can even happen unless the woman agrees for it to happen. It's all I'm saying. You can but he's want all, to so even, all you want. You can go to 10 different women and want to all you want. If all 10 say no, then you didn't get no sex from but nobody. But you still should be left. Your spouse should no, still I, leave I'm you not, that that's you not, pursue I'm those not people. disagreeing with that. I'm not disagreeing with that. I acknowledge that, that you should be left. 
my point is nothing can happen without the consent of y'all. And nothing could happen if you didn't pursue it. So, I mean, if you want to say equally at fault, then equally at fault. Yeah, I can't give in to what you want. I mean, you... you but you, 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 that's, a, that's a, not a, a true statement. You said nothing can happen if you didn't pursue it. Right. If you never... Yeah, she... If you pursued her, she said yes. So, you can't say she's at fault because she said yes. If you didn't pursue her, she wouldn't have said yes. No, she is at fault. They're both at fault. You're trying to say that the woman is not at fault? She's you, not at you fault just for said, him cheating. No, I'm just saying fault, period. Is she at fault at all if a married man comes up and try to hit on her? So, what if and she don't know like, he's married? What if she does? That's the, that's, the, that's the scenario. She does know he's married. So that's the scenario. Those are the rules. She does well, know he's married, he's married, and she says yes. They're equally at fault, but he has he has more fault because he's the married person. He's stepping and out. And what of if his they're wife. both married? Well, if they're both married, then they're equally at fault. Neither of them should have agreed to sleeping with the other. Okay. Like it's. I mean, it's not even. I mean, and at that point, like, does it even matter whose fault it is? You stepped out. Like, I don't care if you asked her 10 times and she finally said yes on the 11th time. It's not like, oh, why you say yes? Now it's your fault he cheated. No, I'm not trying to break it down to that, to be that trivial and push it to a woman and say, it's your fault. All my point is just saying in all of this that none of this can happen without the consent of y'all. That's the conversation. Yeah, it's not about. But none of it okay. could happen if you didn't ask for consent. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's like six in one ear, half dozen in another. Well, what came first, the chicken or the egg? So, I agree with you that both are equal. I don't even want to say equally. I think the man holds a little more fault, but, even but I think you, they both are at fault. Even if you uh, you change the caveat and say, okay, this is a married, a married man and a woman is pursuing him. And he's not pursuing her at all, but he says yes. Okay. So who's at fault then? Both. She was pursuing him. Right, but and he, he could gave say in. no. Right, and he, but he gave in. So in that situation, he controls the, the situation because he can say yes or no. He can say yes or no. Right, yes. so nothing can't happen unless he says yes. No matter what she says to him, no matter how she flirts to him, nothing can't happen because he's in control of that situation because she's pursuing him. So on the other shoe, if a man is pursuing a woman, all he wants, if somebody's pursuing you, and trying to whine and die you every time they saw you. That can go on all it wants to. Nothing can't happen unless you say, you know what? I'm going to fucking see if the grass is green. Maybe the word fault is just misplaced because, I mean, am I at fault that you cheated because I finally agreed and gave in to your advances? I think you are if you know that I'm married. I think you are. And you can't just sit there and say a per No, I'm not trying to say you laughing because you're trying to say you're trying to make it seem like because I'm saying I just can't imagine being in that kind of situation. And like I, I would think and I of course you never know how you will react to the situation. But I would think I would lose my mind. Nobody if, is saying this is an excuse to use I, or tell you that but it's I that could, person's but I fault. I could just foresee a man trying to say I'm like, just saying if like if, if that situation happened, would you look at the woman like, damn, you could have said no. Regardless <laughs> on how you feel no. about your husband or what he did, or what you gonna leave him? All that stuff is true that you say. I mean, all that stuff okay. is legit. So to that point, when I look at her, like, damn, you could have said no. If no. she said no, you wouldn't be in that situation. Yeah, but 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 my but more so, I would be thinking to myself, like, hell, I I know why she ain't say no. My husband is sexy. I love him more. <laughs> Whatever the situation is, like, you'll be thinking to yourself, like, damn, she wanted what I wanted. So. I, mean, I don't know if I'm if I'm saying it right, but I agree with everything she's saying. And she's <laughs> right with everything she's saying to feel about the man for stepping out on a relationship. Right, but all I, I'm saying is he can want to all he wants. This thing, this this sex thing is controlled by women. Mm. It's controlled by women. No man out here can get any coochie okay. unless women say yes. Okay, so let's let us let us take it a Damn. step. Let's take like, it a step. Like why can't back. you acknowledge that? 
No because man can get no coochie on the planet unless a woman says yes. Because I'm just not accepting to say Hold she, up. she's at fault. No, no. I'm, this this statement alone. No man can get any coochie on the planet unless a woman says yes. Uh, uh, Is that uh, a true statement? I'm taking it, yes. Okay, that's all I meant. So let's just take a step back, right? Because cheating is not just sexual, agreed? Right. So if a man is having an emotional relationship with a woman, is she at fault because she gave him her phone number? What, 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 hold on, what constitutes an emotional, an emotional? relationship? Like, How can talking you be in an emotional phone? relationship and you don't even have her phone number? So what, what are you talking about? Like, well, that's what how I'm emotional is it when I don't even have your number? What I'm saying is, just listen. Okay. Obviously, you have her number. Well, Y'all are talking, you know. So when the wife finds out, is the woman, is the other woman at fault? Because it's like, why did you even give him your phone number? No. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you are a person who would think, oh, my husband cheated. No, the I understand woman is you would fault. be looking at both of them. But I'm saying in that situation, is it the same wait to say well yeah he's wrong for pursuing if her I'm and talking guy, to her but if she would have never gave him her phone number <coughs> then it would have never happened is it the same scenario like as far as like no okay she's not giving him coochie but she's just giving him her phone number is it still like well if you would have never said yes to giving him his phone number then we wouldn't be here so are you I mean well I guess you're saying you, that would be the same scenario if you're calling that cheating if you're saying getting a phone number that is, is cheating cheat. okay yeah, yeah, I'm just no, saying that's what I'm saying and y'all have I'm been, trying to be clear if you're saying that exchanging phone numbers is cheating then yes that would be the same scenario to answer your question mm -hmm. that would be the same scenario if you're if you're taking sex out of place and putting in exchanging phone numbers if it's that well, serious well I'm saying building a relationship what I'm saying is you have her phone number. Y'all have built this relationship. Y'all haven't had sex, but y'all have this emotional connection. Y'all on the phone every night, maybe mm -hmm. driving home from work, or maybe you have know she's sending together? you good night text. We just been Let's just say it's just the phone. Okay. Y'all never had any physical contact. Y'all never keep but heated talking up. Shit on the phone. All like all day throughout the day, every day. Like y'all have built an emotional relationship. So you're still that person would still be cheating. Mm -hmm. Then in that sense, is it is the is it still looked at? With the same, like, okay, yes, he pursued her, but she's at fault for giving yes, her. Yes, because you're still enabling. I think both people are at fault. Mm -hmm. I think both people are, to answer the question, I think both people are at fault equally. My point in saying all this is that I none of this, you're right, none of this can happen if the man doesn't want to go out or the woman doesn't want to go out the relationship. But let's just say for the sake of the conversation in the podcast, they did. And now... If um, it's like I'm not gonna say, oh my man cheated or my wife cheated. I'm mad at this dude and not mad at her. Or, or you know, like I'm gonna be equally upset Hopefully. at both of y'all. But at the same time, as a woman, that statement that I said, no man can get any coochie or wind down any woman all he wants. If she says no, it's no. Yeah, so you I'm can not. sex doesn't happen until y'all say yes. That's a fact. I hear what you're saying, but I'm just from a woman's perspective. None of that matters because as a woman, you're looking at the situation like I don't care if she said I, I don't care that she said yes. She should have never had the opportunity. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying from a woman's perspective, she should have never had the opportunity to say to say yes because that opportunity should have never been presented to her. So. Am I angry at her that she was part of this equation? Yeah, but I ain't even really focused but, on that. I so, 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 I see so is it like the scenario where if it's like, okay, yeah, if your girl, if your girl cheat with somebody, don't be mad at your girl and not the the dude. Like you never get mad at the dude. Well, that's, that's how guys. Uh, that's how we talk. If your girl, you know, if somebody smash your girl, don't get mad at the dude. Like. It's just a dude being a dude. Yeah, I mean, it is misplaced anger. That woman has no allegiance to you, no loyalty to you. I, if we're talking about a stranger, of course. We ain't talking about no crazy No, I'm talking about a husband and wife. No, if I understand that. Okay. The woman who your husband... I'm speaking from a woman's perspective. The woman who your husband is cheating with, she has no allegiance no, to guy, you. No, the guy. If you're a guy and your wife cheats with another man, that's how men talk. Like, and I'm saying, mad. as a woman, okay. it's the same thing. I know a lot of women are mad at the other woman, but you shouldn't be. You should be mad at your husband. Okay, that but why woman is it? has no allegiance to you. 
She doesn't owe you anything. Right. You're, it's your husband. So it, the, the same thing, like you said, like, don't be mad at the other guy. Be mad at your girl. Don't be mad at the other woman. Be mad at your dude. Like, he the you, one that made that But if they're equally at fault, I think you can be mad at both of them. I don't think it's, I think it's misplaced anger if you just focus on the woman or the man. But I think you should be equally as mad at your husband or your wife and the person that they cheated with. Okay, man. What if that woman tells you, sis, I don't know you. I don't care about you or your marriage. I understand that, but that's so, how so, you feel. But I feel a different way, too. And if you talk to me like that, I might knock you upside <laughs> your fucking head. But I'm that's just, the reality of it. You can't say what you want to say to me, but okay, I, can, I feel I'm a not certain saying, way, too. I'm just, even if they don't say it, if that is their opinion, like, I don't care, like... I'm not married to you. I don't know you. I don't have any allegiance to you. Your husband approached me or vice versa. A man's like, you know, your your girl wanted me. Like, I don't know you, bro. Like, why would I care about your stuff? Now, as a human, of course, they should. You should have some level of respect. Right. But, I mean, people just aren't the person that's required to uphold that allegiance to you. Right. Your husband that or your wife. And that's the person who... I think the energy should be focused on. But my whole point is sex can't happen without y'all saying yes. Mm. That's all I'm... You, see, okay. you keep saying... I mean, no. Oh, like there's another way. Share no, it if it's another I agree. way. Oh, okay. I agree. I'm just saying that... Okay. It, it just doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm, I 100% agree with that statement. Okay. I 100% agree with that statement. Right. But why doesn't it matter? Because again... Why doesn't it matter? It should have never been an option for her to agree. Yes, it couldn't have happened without her consent, but her consenting should have never been on the table. So I, I get all of that, I, the biology of it. Sex can't happen, you know. You need the penis and you need the hole. I get that. And the penis can't do nothing without the hole. I get that. But at the same time, that penis shouldn't have been searching for another hole. And just because and the hole I said agree. yes... It doesn't matter. So again, I'm not disagreeing with what, with what you said, but if we're talking about fault, eh, I think that at that point, I think that, now I know I'm a human being. I'm a woman. I'm a wife. I love my husband to death. I can't say that I won't be ready to kick a chick door down over mine. But it would be misplaced anger. I, I fight for me, baby. You know what? At, at almost forty two, I hope I hope I wouldn't physically fight for you. If you ain't fought for me in twenty years, you ain't gonna. Have you to ain't fight gave for me, me a reason. Okay, to, so ain't nobody gonna give you no. Well, I'm just asking in a loving way, like, damn, you'll fight for me. But I'm saying, God forbid, you. Like, I know you never me, had a fight, but you were like, no, put yourself on the line and fight is, for me. If you put me in that situation, I hope that I wouldn't fight for you. Like, who wants to be out here fighting for you? Wow, you wouldn't. That's what I said because, it, like. Fight for, like, you wouldn't fight for 20 years? I, I turn this motherfucker upside <laughs> down for 20 something years. You crazy. Uh, another person? You stepped Man, out. It doesn't matter. It could be something I did. I could be, I could, they could not know something that we know. And I could have really fucked up or been on a, I, like, I, you know, it's a reason why she fucking looking for something else. And I know what the reason is. I'm going to tear this shit down. <laughs> you crazy. I can't. You wouldn't fight for me. That's... I didn't say I wouldn't. I said I hope that I wouldn't. But I'm happy that I never have to worry about I just told somebody at work the other day. Danny was saying that in the parking lot. Let's bring the boxing gloves in. Because I was fucking with him. And I said, dude, I got one fight in me the rest of my life. And it's for my wife. If you ever out get disrespected, I got one in me. And that's it for life. I'm going to have to go to the hospital after that. But I got one in me. You crazy. Um, all right. Uh, the Twitch suicide. We talked about it earlier. And just the things that people carry with them. Um, he was a guy that you've seen. I didn't know who he was on... Um, so You Think You Can Dance? So You Think You Can Dance. I knew of him on Ellen. And he seemed like he had great energy. Always smiling. Always wanted to bring light to people. And dance to people. And show black folks in particular how to dance. Regardless if he was married to a white woman. He seemed like he always wanted young black boys to learn how to dance. Like, it was a stigma around that. Like, you know, you're soft or you're gay or something like that because you learn choreography. And I know he didn't want that in, in the black community. But he always seemed happy and vibrant. And you think that, you you know, you got this wife, you got these three beautiful kids, you working on the Ellen show. 
everything is good. And but, he was a host on the current. Yeah, so and you, you got you podcasts and all this kind of shit and different revenue streams, but you just never, ever know that it's that bad. I mean, you know people go through everyday problems, but having it be that bad that you take your life is a different level. Yeah. It's a different yeah. level. And every time I hear about that, and I know somebody close that a suicide is touched, and I see how it affects that person. And it's it's a dangerous thing. Like, it, it's just a true statement when sometime when people die, a piece of you die. Mm. And, and that's the truth. It doesn't happen with everybody, but sometimes, depending on who that person is, when that person passes, a piece of you passes, a la a child, a spouse, or, you know, something like that, a, a mom or dad or something, if, if you're if you're close to him. But just to see his energy and hear something like this at 40 years old, like I'm mm. 45, like at 40 years old, it's, it's just crazy. It is. And, and again, it's one of those things where we know it happens and it, and it happens way more often than it should. And not, we don't know. We meaning us, y'all. Don't anybody. Nobody knows him personally. But when you see somebody on your TV, you start to think that you have, and and not only that, a a deeper level social media. You start to think that you have some sort of insight into their life. But it's just that reminder that you never really know what people carry, and it makes you think like the smiles and the laughter and the dancing is just a mask. And what's happening behind that mask? Sometimes it just becomes unbearable for people where that that mask cracks and, and it comes through and they can't hold it no more. They can't hold it. And I, I you know, I want I know there's a stigma that people say around uh, about suicide that it's selfish because um, you know, it leaves so many unanswered questions and at least it's, one. Why? Uh, yeah, but I mean it, like, well, why? Yeah, why? Like, but it may you know, people wonder like, could I help? <coughs> is there anything you needed? Is there anything I did? Is there anything I didn't do? But it all surrounds the question of why. But but I also heard somebody say, um, you know, in reverse that it's not selfish because um, and this, of course, this is not an all or everybody type thing, but for um, many people who, and I'm guessing this comes from people who've attempted to commit suicide because not being facetious at all, if they've committed suicide, unless they left a letter, then you don't get a chance to ask any questions, but they feel like they are being unselfish by removing themselves from certain situations because you know, maybe they feel like they're a burden. So while that's a biblical thing, that whole the suicide is selfish thing. People get that from the Bible, and I get it, but that's a biblical thing. How is it from the Bible? Because to kill yourself is a sin, and it's a, it's the it's like one of the most selfish things you can do as a human being. That's in the Bible. I don't know what scripture, but that's in. The I mean, Bible. I know that it's a sin, but I didn't know the selfish part was yeah. referenced in the Bible. Well, again, I you know I, I thought people just said it be, be for their and actually I think it's pe it's selfish for people to say it because it's like why are you making it about you to say oh we're so selfish that you took yourself for me you don't know what that person was or maybe you did know but didn't realize obviously to what extent that person may have been dealing with things but it's you just think a, it's along the lines of that person like they kind of saying. Like going through the stages of grief, you want to like point the finger and be like, Find "You blame. didn't leave. You didn't think about the people you would hurt. Like you, you left exactly. your sister. I'm your sister. You left me here. You was my big brother. And that's like selfish. That you thinking shit. about you, yeah. and, and you don't know what that person could have been going yeah. through. But that's human nature because we're hurting. If God forbid, somebody that we love leaves us in that manner without being able to say bye, and, and at their messing? own volition, it's not like it was an accident right. or a sickness. You took yourself away from me, so it's like, see, you did this to me, not. You know, you were hurting and you did this to yourself. And maybe in your mind, you thought you were saving me from something. It's just one of those constant reminders of how important mental wellness is. And it's so cliche to say, check on your strong friends and all that. But I'll be honest, I'm the strong friend in, in, amongst many of my friends. So checking on me is all a good and well thing. But I ain't the person to cry a river on people's shoulder. So saying check on your strong friends, yes, it's important. But people individually have to learn how to ask for help and to speak up. Because yeah, you can check on people all health. day long. If they don't tell you anything is wrong. Then you don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's still a secret. 
Um, think about the worst place you've ever been or the worst place. I think about the worst place I've ever been. And I kind of had thoughts along those lines because of what I was dealing with. But, you know, obviously I never got to that point. But just to think that something is going on that tough and what could it be? Like we talked about with death and stuff and we don't know a lot of people who um, or we, we do, I think we said we do know some people who had like five deaths in a year and, mm. you know, who, who deal with eight family members there over, over their lifetime dying. And it's only been your grandmother and my grandmother. Right. So it's like, you just never know what people are walking around with and what people can carry. Like some people actually walk the street and carry that or your son committing suicide or your daughter committing suicide. Some people carry that and some people, their shoulders just aren't strong enough to deal with stuff like that. Yeah. And not saying it has to be to that magnitude. Um, the guy who wrote on Facebook, like he had a fight with his wife. Right. A fight with his wife and he didn't know how to, and I'm not, I'm the first person to say, I'm not good at sitting with us being in, at beef. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't do well at that. Like I don't, I don't like it when we don't speak and we don't, and we beef like that. I just, it this. I don't know how to deal with it um, the way I should. And I just couldn't imagine like having a fight and just be like, I'm going to end it. Well, no, his situation was different. He got arrested that one night. Right. So that's why his, it, it, it wasn't. That, and I know it was a snowball effect if he lost his job and he yeah, lost I some think friends. That's and what was the catalyst to him committing suicide. He was looked suicide. at like a person who hit his wife. Right. Because even the wife regretted it calling the cops. So. It wasn't that he killed himself just because of the fight. It was all of the effects that happened because of that. And not to blame her, she called the cops. You know, maybe she was nervous. Maybe he yelled in a way she wasn't used. Whatever it was that made her feel like she wanted to call the cops in that instance, that snowball effect, he couldn't bear the pressure of that. And it's a shame because in hindsight, from the outside looking in, you think, this happens to black men all the time, and it, 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 this would have blew over. You probably would could have just got another job. Charges probably would have been dropped. It would have been okay. But some people can't handle the stigma the, of it. Yeah, the stigma, the pressure, the uncertainty about what's next in life. You know how much uncertainty we deal with, like as a people, and not knowing, like you know, and we learn how to maneuver through it, and not everybody knows how to do that because it's not everybody's normal. And to a, a lot of black men, it's their normal, but it's not everybody's normal. And yeah. you're right. When they get in that situation, they don't know how to respond. They don't know how to react. What if the whole um, killing yourself is a selfish thing? It's like misinformation. And all this time, it like we the more we see this to the person who takes their life, they're looking at it like it's the it's the most selfless thing I can do. I it's, think I, I think like that's how it sh it should be perceived. Although people perceive it as a selfish thing, when you break it all down, the person who took their life is probably looking at it like this is the most selfless thing I can do because of what I'm feeling and what I'm doing to the people around me. So I'm gonna remove myself from this 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 realm. I, I'm sure that there are people who struggle with suicidal ideations who probably think along those lines. Unfortunately, if you're left as the surviving family members, it's probably really hard to think in that way. Mm -hmm. At least initially, maybe at some point you may come because you're to conditioned to think yourself, yeah. that. right? And you and you're you're thinking about yourself. I'm hurt. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm missing you. And again, it's it's. I, I want. I don't want to say it's your fault. I'm, I'm. I'm thinking about the the deceased person. It's because you removed yourself from the equation. You. It wasn't through sickness. It wasn't through a car accident. It wasn't through some. You know, something like that. So I think that's where the selfishness comes. In, the the thought of it being selfish, but it's it's one of those things. It does leave unanswered questions, and especially when there's not a letter left. But even in those scenarios, there are unanswered questions because we always want to feel like you know, some sort of false control, like we would have been able to fix it. We would have been able to help. And we don't know that we could have. And I wish there was some some way you could look up between the people who commit suicide, the ratio, and the people who are talked out of it. 
like I don't know how to distinguish or 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 even say that or am I am I articulating it, articulating it right? But to well, distinguish you, yeah. between the people who commit suicide and the people who wanted to and was talked out of it and just like never never even tried again. Yeah, you, you got some people who keep trying or I tried two years ago and this person talked me out of it, but two years later I tried again. Like a person who just was talked out of it and never ever tried it again. Not to be, <laughs> not to be morbid. Because I want to know, not to cut you off, I want to know if it's something you can be talked out of. Or once, and for the people who were talked out of it, maybe your mind wasn't really made up. But once your mind is made up, then I don't think it's anything anybody can say. Well, I want to take it a step further. And not to be morbid in any kind of way, I would, I would like to talk to people who have made attempts and failed. Like, I'm talking about serious attempts. Like, you know, we've heard stories of... I don't of, think there's that many, though. But we've heard stories of people who shot themselves and survived. Yeah. And I, I remember a story, a guy shot himself with a shotgun and survived. Like, I would I would like to know from a... Psych, not like any kind of, like, um, paparazzi type of way, but from a psychological perspective. Like, what went through your head? What were your final thoughts? Like, as you thought you were dying, what was... Like, I really would like to know. And then, do they still struggle? But now, are, are people just watching it? I don't think or, I would, though. Because if I, if I learned, it would make me look at people different. And that's this mm. is crazy to say. But if I talked to somebody who tried to commit suicide and failed at it, and I asked them what was the cause of it, and they said something trivial to me, or what I perceived as trivial, I would think like, like almost like I see a six foot nine, three hundred and ninety pound man. Like we're the same. Like mm. holy shit! Like we look like two different species. Like I'm this size and you're half a giant. <laughs> like I would right. think like you're different from me, and I would think in that like something. That I perceive as, I don't know, you lost your job. Like, are you able to work again? Are you able to get another job? Then I understand you being sad about it, but get another job. It's not like this was the only job you could ever have. And I well, get let's that. Well, let's acknowledge that, you know, it's the holiday time. Right, How right, many people right, right. unfortunately have ended their life because they knew that And they again, I said something that family. I perceive as right, trivial. And right. I, I, don't, I don't want to be respectful in saying that something I perceive as trivial because it's all relative. So the person says to me, like, they lost their job, and that's what I was thinking about when I killed my, when I tried to kill myself. I would think, damn, like, like. It I'm, wasn't in your mind that didn't rationalize right. that you can get another job. And I would think to myself, am I way stronger minded than this person that that wouldn't affect me that way? Or is that person weaker minded than me that it would? Like, it's all relative, but it would make me think about a lot of shit, like, are, like how can we be the same? You know what I find interesting? If we're that fragile, like, damn. You know what I find interesting? And I, I, I haven't done research on this, but I would like to. You know that um, suicide, I don't want to say it's a gene because I don't want to speak out of It's time. hereditary. It's hereditary and it mainly is... Uh, Does that mean it's a gene or is that two different things? That's what I'm saying. The hereditary implies that it's a gene and I don't know. And a gene implies that it's part of your DNA. Right. So I don't know if that's the truth if it's hereditary it, then i would think it's in there with baldness and shit like that which right. is right and it's yeah. and it's men it primarily affects your man your paternal line of mm -hmm. your family so i think that's just really interesting to think that um it, it makes me think like is it a chemical imbalance is it something that can be fixed um because i mean if you think about a gene that's science like it's that's that's different than it being a psychological thing where you were just extremely stressed out like if it is a gene is that not, if you knew that your great grandfather your grandfather and let's just say your uncle all committed suicide can i not like how women who know that breast cancer run in their family and they can have an elective mastectomy to oh, to try to avoid the chances if it's, if it's known thing, to yeah. be a gene, can I not get that fixed? I think it's. A, I think those things, the her, the things being hereditary, is a gene. I think it's woven into your DNA. If your grandfather committed suicide and your father did, you have a high propensity of doing it too. Right. Not saying you will, but the let's not get too high. depressed with you. Like let's not get things too low with you because we know that it's in your bloodline. 
And it's, it, it even bleeds in into like um, other parts of life. Like if you're a woman beater, if your dad beat women, it's like stuff that you see. And not only and that's that, a different thing, but you can see a certain behavior and become that. But see, see, that's what I mean by is it nature or nurture? Because because the, the, uh, that is pri that's through nurturing. Being right, a woman, that's why I'm saying right. it's a different thing. That's a nurture thing, but I'm saying it bleeds over into you repeating the same thing. Now I think the but other I think the hereditary it, is the, it changes yeah, the, the I think it's suicide, I think it's baldness, I think it's sickle cell, I think it's stuff like that. And not only that's that, woven into your DNA. And on a side note, this is weird. This is how bad and it had nothing to do with the conversation. This is how bad alcohol is that we've over the years dr drank put alcohol into our DNA. You mm. can like if your grandfather oh, was right, an alcoholic, that can become hereditary. Yeah, that can become hereditary too. You can have the propensity to be an alcoholic. So, right. Well, well, yeah, that's crazy. But it going back to suicide. And also, I would think as a man, or even if I was a woman, I would <coughs> wonder if if my father suffered from, you know, I don't know if you want to say suffered, if that's the right word, but it would make me concerned about having a male son. Mm -hmm. If I was a male or female, and I knew that that was in my bloodline. Right. If your grandfather committed suicide. Not a male son, and your but dad. a son. And then you would be like, I don't want yeah. a son because, again, don't not get too low. I don't know where you might go with this. Yeah. Um, but condolences to Twitch's family, his wife, his three kids, and everybody who loved them. Um, condolences to all you. And I know that we've talked about this before, and I just want to put it out there. Um, there is a national suicide hotline. If you are thinking about it um, or have some downtime, and I'm sorry, this is a last minute thing, so I'm pulling up the number right now. You can actually dial 988 on your phone. You don't even need a whole phone number. You can dial 988 or you can text 988. You don't even need a whole phone number. So pray, like you said, prayers for his family, his three children, um, and for anybody out there that may be struggling. All right, come on. Let's get through this. Um, T.I., Admitting snitching. How about that? So T.I. was on his podcast and said that got pulled over. The only time he's ever given information was on his dead cousin. Pulled over, was in a car, got some guns, had a case. Cousin ended up dying. A reference in the show that I had a conversation with him, I guess, as he passed or whatever. And he told me uh, he'll take all the charges. And he gave and said that the guns was his cousins because he was dead. So this is my thing, right? When we talk about the whole no snitching thing, mm. it's not, it, okay, you don't snitch because you don't want to put somebody else in trouble, have them go to jail based on information that you gave. In this case, the person ain't going to jail. Is that not the best, like, is that so wrong? Um, you ain't sending nobody to jail. But you have pa you have paperwork. No, no, let's let's just let's distinguish this. What we're what we're talking about here is stupid. Okay, so let's just right. say for the sake of conversation. <laughs> but where he comes from and what he portrays is he comes from a certain street street culture, and in street culture you don't have uh, paperwork or somebody can pull up something on your jacket where you gave information on somebody. Um, that's a no-no. In, in any street culture, in any hood, in anywhere, there can't be no paperwork of you telling. So the fact that there is, I don't like it, but, um, I, you know, he didn't know that his cousin was going to die, I don't think. So I don't know if he had a conversation with him while he was alive or he said that in reference to when he passed. Like, I talked to him and he told me I he'd take the charges. But the lawyer said... I can make this go away if it was all his. And he just was like, it's all his. So there's somewhere something written that you said, this is all his. And that man ain't do no time behind it because he was <laughs> out of here. I don't see the problem with I, it. I, it's like six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Because if you, if Clifford says he comes from that, then he shouldn't. Have admitted that he should have took that to his grave. Yeah, okay, that I he get. Shouldn't admit it, that, that I get. I don't think he should have did it, but he shouldn't have definitely should have volunteered that information. People already thought he was a snitch because he did a 
Crime Stoppers commercial hotline or some shit <laughs> when he was on parole. He had to do a Crime Stoppers commercial call the Crime Stoppers if you want to tell and people thought he was a snitch then. But to do something like this, it's like, Look, it was smart to me. Okay. Like, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die on that hill. Because I'm not condoning. And again, this is for those that abide by that street culture. And we talked about this whole snitching thing. Like, if you abide by that law, you do something with somebody, you don't tell on them to get yourself out of trouble when you know you had something to do with it. Now, I also believe you don't take no charges for somebody. And you throw your own life away and you didn't have nothing to do with it. I know that's part of street culture and I think that's stupid. But in this case, ain't nobody doing no time on the count of his words that was given. It's a win-win, sounds like to me. So if you was a dude and you and your, your cousin was out and y'all had, he had a 50 cal on him and you had a 38, got pulled over, y'all put the guns under the seat, both of y'all go to jail and he happened to die. In the midst of going to trial in court, and your, Officer, and your lawyer I told say, him that we should be say, driving you know around. What? Before we go to trial, you can plead out, and we'll tell him that the guns is his if you cool with that. But it, you're cooperating. He's dead, and nobody's going to be doing any time because of me. I think he would want me to do this on okay. his behalf. Now that he's deceased, of course, if he was alive, hell now, if no. If you're a street dude and you know where you come from, and your lawyer say. This is going to be considered like you cooperating, like you telling. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. I ain't sending all. nobody And again, to I'm jail. not going to die on that hill because the guy is dead. I just, you know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's, it's not weird. smart. It's not smart, but it's kind of weird. It fell in his lap. It ain't like it's something he planned. It's uh, It just fell in his lap. The dude died, and it was like, okay, I could blame this on him. He was my cousin. He family. He ain't here. Ain't nobody gonna go to jail. I get the theory. I think if it. I had a chance to talk to my cousin and they was on their way out and they knew on this like he and they was like you know just tell him it was all mine. I ain't gonna make it anyway. Just tell him it was all mine. You know I'll take the rap for you. Tell him everything. Give him all the details. It was mine. Put it on me. And you go home to your family and I'm going to meet my maker. Okay. That's how the com I'm, I'm cool with that's that. How the that's conversation how you feel. Went. Um, I just think it's a little bit weird. Um, I don't know if we talked about this last time. We made a breeze past it, but Brittany got Brittany Griner came home. Mm. Um, she was brought back home to the United States for Victor Boot, who was called the Merchant of Death, who uh, killed people in the 1990s to the 2000s in Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. They made a movie about him that Nicolas Cage played in called The Lord of War. Um oh. Oh. Yeah, that's about Victor Boot. He played Victor Boot. That's I saw that. That was a great movie. <laughs> yeah, that was the movie. Um, what do you think? But they, there's a documentary about him, too. I knew about About the, the real Victor Boot. Yeah, but, but I did Lord not know Lord of War was yeah, he about sold guns. him. That's what he did. Yeah, I mean, that was a great <laughs> movie. And uh, my thing is this shout out to Brittany Griner and her family. I, anybody would be happy to know that your family member is home regardless of the circumstances. I'm sure they don't care about the circumstances. I'm sure they're not fighting for the as state go as government. Right. I'm what, sure is they're, it right they're thing to not do? <laughs> there's they're not fighting for the freedom and they're not re um sacrificing uh, willing to sacrifice their own loved ones life for the safety of of America from a higher governmental standpoint. Government from the government. Did they do this, the right thing? I don't think it probably was the best decision. Um, this is this this is what I thought, right, to myself, because I don't trust this government um, at all. Um, they sneaky, they lie, they make up stuff, like they bold face tell lies. What if this was just all a plot? <coughs> to get something going with the Biden administration? Because this is the thing. Brittany Griner was not new to traveling through Russia. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, oh, why would you run? She like, played she, there she played. Years. Yeah, so she, she wasn't new. What if, and I, I'll i first say this what if on the Russia side they say, let's grab one? We're going to hold her. We know, they know what's going on in America. You got, she's black, she's part of the LGBTQ community, she's a, she's woman. a woman, and she's, she's a celebrity. A celebrity. We got all four of these things in our in our pocket. Let's hold her as ransom, and we want him. I think they knew eventually. They and there's another thing. 
Trump could, could try to say, oh, Biden, this was the, a bad decision, blah, 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 blah. I would not put it past Trump to have been whispered in Putin's ear to say, you know, he won't look out, you know, as it gets closer to election because he wanted, you know, had the people in his on his good side thinking he did a good thing. And I'm gonna use this against him in the twenty in the, in the election. He's gonna try to run on it. Like, it, like it's it, all the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. It makes no sense for them to have went as hard as they did trying to give her as much time this big spectacle before when they talked about doing the exchange they threatened the u.s saying that they better not not to talk about it don't say anything the u.s still talked about it when they said that they weren't supposed to now all of a sudden on the day of here it goes happen all along this they were gonna do it they were gonna let her go it was just they had to wait until the the chips fell into place and not only that they had to wait until trump announced his re-elect or you know him running again yeah, his presidency. it had to fall into place they knew what they were doing this and ain't that, the first time she traveled through there with whatever oil she had orders. in her bag and the first time when it happened when it initially happened they asked for nine people to her one like and, and the u.s was like hell no because they asked for, for boot and like eight other people um but I agree with you. But I do not think it was a fair exchange. I think it was a win-win for Russia. I agree with mm -hmm. the politics of it. And I think that they sit back now and say, they gave us Victor Boot for fucking Brittany Griner. Like, if we had somebody of real serious stature, like, as we know, there's bigger celebrities in America yeah. than Brittany Griner. But if we had somebody of real stature, who may, who may we get for that? If they Which gave us the merchant of death. Which means y'all celebrities who are out there, because we know y'all celebrities be watching. This guy was too. tried in Manhattan, in New York, tried in Manhattan and convicted and was sentenced here in federal prison. Was mm -hmm. held in Marion State Penitentiary. Not only I that, mean, let's think, Marion Federal Penitentiary. Let's think about Paul Whelan, a white man. There's, you know, people are going to say, oh, they let this white man go for this other. Like, it wouldn't have had the international attention that it did and i'm not saying that you know it's fair that they have him there but they didn't let him go because they knew like this just doesn't hold the same weight but it holds the, i think to them it holds the same weight to america because he's a marine and it's like he served for the country how are you not going to go get him when the code is leave nobody behind he wasn't over there and, and committed a crime so to America, he's being held. But let's acknowledge the fact that the temperature of the country has changed. Well, he's not, been over there for four years. But the temperature <laughs> of the country has changed and not for the betterment. Unfortunately, there is a lack of respect yeah. with the younger generations as it relates to the military. Yes, he served his country, but that valor that is given to veterans unfortunately doesn't hold the same weight as again those four demographics that she falls into the categories of is politics mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree with you but i i, I just think that it was not an equal no like trade like and it was very dangerous yeah you can't we don't have, know what's gonna happen and even the, like with social media you actually see the exchange like you see the video of them walking up and giving hugs like to this, this is homeland in real life americans and was tried in new york city did 14 years and y'all just them letting them go and re i don't i can't even say the re, repatriatized him to russia and he's a citizen, no charges, no nothing. Gave him back, don't have to monitor him, no nothing like that. And I would start thinking of Homeland, like, they probably put one of them sticky things on this, on this lapel. If y'all never watch Homeland, watch like it. That. I believe everything that happens on there is a true reflection of, of the, the shady CIA, stuff yeah. that, is, that happens in the government. Yep. I could go for some Homeland, too, like a, a, a rewatch of that. But you can't see the Brody thing. No, we gotta skip like the first two seasons, maybe even season three. Like, I just we've seen those seasons well, I'm, too I'm gonna much. I'm start watching, and then you can jump in on season three. <laughs> um, he will wear me out watching something over and over again. Homeland's good though. Homeland's I seen great. It in years. I haven't seen I, Homeland in like five years. I know the Brody episodes in and out. I can go to Sopranos. No, no, or I can no, go no. To Homeland. I burnt the Sopranos. Homeland's. I mean, Sopranos is there when I need it. Um, what have you learned? You know what I learned? Did please, you did you know Please don't go into like dinosaurs and shit like that or something you learn about global warming and you wanna 
Why are you you I'm don't like my lesson? Wow. Nothing. He wants to give y'all some cliche, some you know, healing cliche, which is all well and good, but ain't nothing he learned. It's just something that he's disseminate some knowledge or wisdom that he's disseminating to y'all. No, it's supposed it's just to be about a piece of positivity out there, and I don't have any positivity to put out this week in my what do i learn so i don't know what she's talking about but that's been your thing so this is what i've learned did you know that the phrase knocked up like referring to women who are pregnant it it refer it originates from slavery um in 1813 it was used when women were pregnant and on the slave block because mm -hmm. them being pregnant the price was knocked up because now they're worth more because they're about to have another slave being born into whatever family. So this is another like, oh, you're not, it's like you're not just getting a cow, you're getting a pregnant cow. So now you're going to have this. Uh, so the phrase knocked up, we just was talking about how there's so many um, linguistic terms that we use are so canceled, frequently so that are derived from very negative um, from, from very negative beginnings. And this is another one to add to that lexicon of terms that we have to cancel because of the negative connotation that is placed on them. And specifically negative towards black people. us as black people because yeah. of slavery and other racial um j j just it's horrible to think like how often do we say oh she knocked up. Like and we just say it, not thinking. Like, you knocked up. You got a baby in you. But now we know it's because the price on her head, on the black woman's head, on the slave block, was knocked up because she was pregnant. Mm. That was real um, insightful information there. Yeah. That was a good one this week. Thank you. Give me some that. Um, I learned this, on, you know, on my healing journey. So she talking her shit. But I learned that I'm... Um, 180 positive and 180 negative. That's my acceptance of myself. That, but I want to be 360 positive. Mm. It's what I, I want to be. But I'm 180 negative and 180 positive. It's because I want to lead with love. I want to lead with peace. But I do understand what pain is. And I'm experiencing a different pain. And um, not to brag, but... I've been hurt by people and I've hurt people um, mentally and physically. So just in dealing with that, I I want to lead with love. I want to be a positive person, but I'm 180 negative and 180 positive. So can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. How did you come to that calculation? Because it's 360 degrees in a circle. I understand that. But knowing my husband the way you are, I will say this. I don't think that it's realistic for anybody to be 360 positive because I think you set yourself up to be hurt. Like, I think not so much you have to have a little negative in there, but you have to have a little, you have to have some realism in there. Mm -hmm. So being 360 positive, I don't know if that's healthy for anybody, but for well, you. I think the positivity and sharing something that you may be going through that may be perceived as negative is the positive that you're not hiding it. Okay. So when you're going through those moments and you show that, yo, I'm going through this, but look how I'm getting through it, that's the positive. You hiding it would be a negative to what you're saying. Gotcha. So that's where I see it being 365. And you're right. I'm not saying a perfect person. I'm just saying always trying to lead with positivity and love, but accepting that um, I have the ability to hurt people. Um, I can hurt people. And, you know, if... Like, I'm not all the way healed. Like, if somebody tried to hurt me or hurt her, like, there's no question, like, w the things that I would do to that person. So that's still in me. And so that's on the negative side. But on the positive side, I don't, I don't want to ever be in that space. I want to be in a calm, peaceful space. And that's the kind of space I want to lead with. So what do you think my numbers are? I don't know. You would have to tell me what your numbers are. I don't know. Because I was thinking that you were more like 270 negative and 90 positive. And I was thinking I probably was 270 positive and 90 negative. Mm. Um, three grams. So that we didn't do the three grams? I thought that. Okay. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. That I was what would you learn? Three grams. Give no, me, prior to that. I thought no, that. we was just having a chat gotcha. about some I things. I enjoyed it. Um, give me one non-curse word that was bad you couldn't say growing up. 
but it wasn't a curse word. It wasn't the fuck, the shit, the pussy, the motherfucker, but it was like, you better not be saying that. Like some people, well, could, like some girls couldn't say pregnant. No, that, I, that was stupid. Now, this isn't one word, but growing up in the house, me and my sisters, we weren't allowed to tell each other to shut up. Right, that was okay. like that's one of those things. So that's, that's what I say. It's two words. We couldn't say shut up. If you ever up. knew a girl that couldn't say pregnant, you had to say you having a baby. No, I've never heard that before. Because pregnant was kind of... No, like I've never... Don't we'll be saying nobody pregnant. I've never heard that <laughs> before. But we couldn't say shut up. We couldn't say somebody was lying. I remember getting in trouble... Could you say damn? No. Could we... you say hell? Um, as we got older, I think when we were younger, we probably said heck. And then like, as we got to be teenagers or whatever, we kind of started saying. And then what, what, not. and what reference, like telling your sister to go to hell? Cause like, what else no, would you say? No, you'd be like, oh, hell no. Oh, okay. Like something, okay. but, but I don't think you, we could say it like to an adult or to a parent. Right. Yeah. So that was kind of the difference. I'll never forget when I used to curse. Um, like I started, it's weird that I remember this. I started cursing at eight and I'll never forget me and my cousin Regina used to walk from school together. And I remember us just, she was four years older than me and us just talking and walking and we saying something and I cursed. And I remember looking up at her like, you know, you walking, I'm like, you going to tell my mom I curse? And she was like, no, I don't care about that. You just better not let her hear you. I was like, okay. From there, just went on. But I just remember looking up at her. And then fast forward to a run of time, I was about... Why did you trust people like that, though? As a kid, anybody older than me, I would just think you're going to tell. Like, well, she was my ask. cousin, okay, so I okay. kind of looked... It wasn't like she was a grown-up. Like, I was eight, she was 12. You know, okay. I looked All up... Because right, I'm ready to say, big cousins, you kind of looked at like aunts until you got big. But if she was 12 and you ate, that's yeah, not I kinda a Yeah, I kind of said more as like a big sister, kind of, yeah. But I'll never forget, uh, fast forward to around the time I was probably like 10, maybe 11. And this girl who was supposed to be my friend, we got into an argument in school about something. I was in the sixth grade. And I'll never forget, she called... She, not a teacher... She called my house and told my mom that I'd be cursing in school. Her, her name was Siobhan. They used to call her Tugboot. And I remember ooh, ooh. I remember my mom, I, me, I'm, I was saying to my mom, no, I don't. She be lying. And my mom was like, shut up. She said, I know you be cursing around your friends, and I don't care. You just better not ever have no adult tell me that you curse. Oh, it was on from there. You went to school the next day. <laughs> like Kevin Hart, uh, <laughs> I was Kevin putting them together. Like, it's about to go down. I was putting them together. My words was she ain't got no <laughs> But no, Adele, I, that was one thing. I I never was disrespectful in that sense to ever curse Me around Adele. What about you? What's the word you couldn't say? Um, shit. It's like, no, nah, I'm just oh. messing with you. Um, we couldn't say shut up. Mm -hmm. Couldn't say shut up. Couldn't say damn. No. Um, couldn't say cocksucker. Why would you be able to say that? that's a that's bad? No, cock isn't a bad word. But it refers to a penis. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying. But say it's that. weird because it can also refer to a vagina. Yeah, and that's... in a different culture because in black culture, cock means coochie. Right. In white culture, cock means dick. That's so weird. It's, yeah, it's stupid. stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. No, but, no question. No. Were you ever around kids that did curse around adults? But this was the caveat. If they were repeating a story, they you know, would curse. I was a, I grew up in around 26th Street and it was like like young Tyrone, young like young young, we was young like 8, 9, 10 years old. It's a cuss adults out like it wasn't nothing. Like used to curse around like I've been around kids who curse where it was uncomfortable to me. Yeah. Like at that beginning, like, like I might have slipped out of shit, but I ain't never said motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> like, I never said pussy. Like, I never damn. forget my cousin Kelvin. He moved up here from Florida. He's to come visit. But I say him because I remember specifically he used to curse a lot. Right. Well, I remember. I'll never forget one day Kelvin. He moved up here up here when he was like twelve, and we were in my house, and he was telling a story to us, like me and my mom, and. He wasn't cursing at my mom, but he was repeating a conversation that somebody else had. And he was saying all the curse words. In it. And I was sitting there like, like, oh my God, he's saying all this. And I was like, don't talk like that in front of my mom. And he's like, 
what i'm just saying what whoever's but i was like but you seen the curse word he's like yeah to him it was okay because he was just repeating a conversation and i don't know if that was like a southern thing versus northern thing where that was deemed okay but i just always thought that was weird yeah i actually just saw a tiktok video of a kid six years old found out he was having a little sister and his dad's best friend lived next door who he was cool with so he went to his ring cam and said, you know, this is some bullshit. I'm having a sister. I need you to talk to my dad because I told you that I tell my dad I want a brother and I don't want no sister. And, you know, when, when she come here, I, you know, this is some bullshit. And his dad, he turned around, his dad was standing there. And he's like, why are you cursing? And his little boy said, I slipped. <laughs> And the father just said, you always slipping. But it was like, he's six years old and he's like saying yeah. bullshit. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, second Graham. Florida teacher interrupts kids praying on and said they was practicing magic and stepped on their prayer rugs in her classroom. She should be fired. She was. Um, <coughs> there should also probably be some legal ramifications. Desecrated their prayer rugs because you know you shouldn't step on them. So they probably won't use them again. And said out loud, walking in between them, what are y'all practicing magic? Who told y'all to come up here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just completely disrespectful on purpose. And despite your religious beliefs, I would never, ever. I remember I helped one of our, one of my former team members find a place um, for her to pray because that was, you know, what she did. And we had, a pre we actually had a breastfeeding room and was like, look like you can use it for this ain't want nobody breastfeeding but that's completely disrespectful that's the type of thing where hopefully the parents came up there and um you know did some street justice yeah mm -hmm. yeah because you was disrespectful i agree with everything she just said i think she should be um not she should skin. be dealt she should with be, she should be taking the dr umar see how many lashes she gets ah! she probably a thousand lashes <laughs> <laughs> um last gram couples and my girl not my girl i'm sorry um, my uh, listener out there, Crystal, um, agrees with me here. Couples with joint accounts stay together longer. I mean, it, th this is my thing. I say that to say this is like the one thing we agree on. Like, you and Crystal, yeah. yeah. Out of all the shit we disagree on, this is like the one thing we agreed on. I think it's so weird when people have, well, I I'll say women. When it, women have this ideal in their head about I've heard the stories of like not letting your husband know all like what your paycheck is or how or all the money that you have, always keeping a little bit for yourself. And my thing is like, I don't have the mentality to prepare for a rainy day. We prepare for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. We have savings. We our our money is together, and that whole if it, if it's a mutually agreed upon decision. You know, for whatever you want to do that. But if it's because you don't trust your partner, like I can trust you with raising kids together and I can trust you with my heart and with loving me and I married you, but money is where we draw the line. That's probably why, you know, those statistics might say you stay together longer because I think it breeds um, contention in yeah. a relationship yeah. because out of all the problems because you could it, be dealing with having financial problems is heavy because you're saying this is ours but this over here is mine and that over there is yours and, and that breeds contention because when it's time to do things that we need our money for it's like well well how much you put in how much is this and then you start a 50 50 thing. or if this person don't have enough do you yeah, loan the other like, person yeah, something and, then, then and do they gotta pay to that, you back yeah, you're married to that person and you start loaning money or saying well, I put four hundred, and you put. Well, you oh, he owe me this, or she like yeah, I don't know that, how that, that goes. That kind of stuff is crazy, and it breeds contention. And I also think when you have money together, there's a um, certain sense of responsibility that it's ours, so you care a little bit more. I mean, when you single, not not okay, not not when you single, but when you have your own and you earning your own, and this is mine over here, and I give what I want. You have the tendency to be freer with your money to spend it the way you want. Yeah, but when it's ours. You have the, a sense of responsibility. You like you don't want to let your partner down, so you you make more uh, sound um, decisions. You, you're a little bit more responsible with the money. So I think that 
that helps. Yeah, and, and this is one of the things that bothers me about social media when people say how things should be. I think how it should be is what the couple mutually agrees upon. Right. Because if 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 you can't have like I don't agree with somebody having like a secret account and the other person well if it's a secret the other person doesn't know, like that's where that that's just dishonesty. And I think the the way that things should be is what y'all agree upon. If she gonna pay all the bills and he stay at home or he do something else with his money and they agree. Hey, that's what works for them. If he pays all the bills and she does whatever with her money and they agree, that's what works for them. I don't think there's a right or wrong to it. I think it should be a mutually agreed upon, respectful whatever decision and whatever works. Because that's where people get tied up into like, well, they do things this way and we should. Well, that may not work for you, though. Like your money situation may be different than the next person. So you, I don't think there's like a one side fit all except to have open clear honest communication so that everybody's on board and knows what's going on mm -hmm. let's do a wrap back to the podcast episode 101 cracking the 100 cracking the century um we're centarians over here yeah um you can catch us on act to the podcast.com you can catch us on uh facebook instagram youtube google podcast anchor Radio Public, TikTok, Breaker, and Spotify. On all those platforms, you can see our faces, hear our conversations, talk our shit, um, and y'all can chime in. So, uh, woo, woo. Act 2, the podcast, episode 101, wrapping up. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.